Hello, welcome to another Blender tutorial. So in this video, we are going to see how to create the fireball effect. So before starting, we need to enable a plugin. So just we need to go to the edit preference and here search for extra and make sure we have to enable this two add-ons. So select this and just close this thing. And now we need to create a curve. So we need to press a shift A and we need to go to curve and make sure we need to go to this curve spirals and select this spheric. And after that, we need to make some settings. So here we can go to this curve spiral settings. And here I will give the number of turns to two and I will give the steps to like 32. And next I will give the radius. So radius depends on your requirement. Uh, here at present, I will give like three. So that's it for the settings here. And now I will rotate this fireball. So I want to travel this fireball towards the y direction. So I will go to the side view and just I will rotate this so you can rotate. So just I will rotate in minus 90 degrees. And also what I will do is just I will move this starting point towards this 3D cursor. So just I will move this towards the y direction and make sure I will place this. And also this curve is little bit bigger. I want to scale towards the y direction. No. So if you scale this, now it is scaling from the center. Now what the thing is, I want to scale it from this point here. So first we need to change the origin of this object to this 3D cursor. So in order to do that, we can go to this object, set origin. And now what the thing is, just we need to select this option like origin to 3D cursor. So see now the origin of this cursor has been changed to the position of this 3D cursor. And now I will scale this. And I will scale only in the Y axis. And also just I will scale it down a little bit. So that's fine. So next I will take a round cube. So select this shift A and here we can go to the mesh and here we can select this round cube. And here I will give the arc value to like 32 and I will give the radius to one. And now what the thing is, this sphere has to follow this path. That means we need to attach this sphere to this path here. So in order to do that, we need to select this sphere and we need to go to this option constraint. And here in the constraint, we need to select the option called follow path. So we need to select and we need to select the path where you want to attach it. So here the target, I can select this spiral. So now it has been attached to this spiral here. And also I want to travel towards the Y direction. So let it be like a default. And now we need to create an animation. So see now here you can see there is an option called offset. So see now whenever we change this value of this offset, it is just traveling towards the path here. So just I'm uh, giving the offset value to the minus direction. So now we need to give the animation for this thing here. So let it be go to the first position. And now we need to enable this animation. So here you can see we can turn on this animation. So let's say I will turn on this animation and after like 150 frames, let it be go to the end of this curve here up to here. That is fine. So let it be like minus hundred and now just I will insert the key and now we will click on this play. Okay. So we got this animation. So now we need to give the animation for this scale also. So let's say for example, I will go to the first. And now starting, I want the scale of this object should be zero. So just we'll go to this thing. And here I will give the value to like zero. So first of all, just we'll give the animation to the 30th frame. Let's say like 0 0.2. So I have given like 0 0.2 and just I will enable the scale and I will go to the first frame and I will give the value to like zero and just turn on keyframes. And now see it is slowly increasing the size of this object. And laterally after 60 frames, just I want to increase it more like 0 0.275 or something. And just I will enable the animation. And after that, just I will slowly decrease the size to 0 0.2. And laterally at the end, just I will decrease it to like zero. So it depends on your requirement. So now we got this animation. And next, what the thing is, we need to create the domain for the fluid simulation. So just I will take an cube. So shift A and mesh, I will take an cube. And make sure this cube has to cover entire this curve here. So I will go to the side view and just scale it. And if you want, you can turn on the X-ray mode by clicking on this thing. So, so that's fine. Now we have covered entire curve here. And now we will give the fluid property for this thing. So if you go to this physics tab, and here by selecting this cube, we can click on this fluid. Before that, I will name it as like domain. So just click on this fluid and the type of this fluid is domain. 
And here I will give the resolution to like 256. And also time scale, I will give the value to like 1.25. And next after that, come down and just enable this adaptive domain. And here I will give the value to two. And also here I will give the value to 0 0.005. And now in the gas, I will give the value of this word city to 0 0.035. And also I will enable this dissolve here. Just I will give the value to like 100 in the time. And also we want some randomness in the smoke. So just we'll enable the noise. And strength I will decrease to 0 0.35. It depends on your requirement. And now we'll open this fire. Here I will give the value to like 0 0.65. And the flame smoke, I will give the value to 2. And here 0 0.45. And temperature, I will decrease to like 1.5. And minimum value, I will give the value to 2. And also, we don't want any gravity. So come down. Just if you go to the field weights, just I will decrease this gravity. And in the catch, uh, so here I will type, I will select it to like all. And next, we will apply the flame effect for this sphere. So just if you come here, and now if you select this, and now here we have to apply this fluid in the physics step. And here type, we need to select it to like flow. And here flow type fire and smoke. And the flow behavior, I will select it to inflow. And the sub steps, I will increase to two. And next we'll come to this flow source. And here I will give the surface emission to one. And also make sure enable this initial velocity. And now we will make a number of duplicates for this sphere. So just I will go to the first frame and make sure we need to select this round cube and this spiral. And now we will duplicate by pressing shift D. And what I will do is just I will rotate in Y axis by pressing R and Y in the 90 degrees. So just what I have done is I have pressed shift D and after that we need to press R and literally we need to select the axis in which you want to rotate like Y. And also literally we need to give the value how much angle you are going to give like by pressing 90. So we need to press enter. So see now we, it has been rotated towards the 90 degrees. So whenever we click on this play, see now we got these two spheres and we will duplicate more two times. So by pressing shift D and just I will press R in the Y axis and press 90. So now we'll click on this play. So see, we got this nice animation here. So now we have completed this simulation part and we need to select this and we need to bake this and we will go down. And here we need to click on this bake all. So I will come back after baking. So click on this bake all. So I have baked up to 75 frames. So now we'll click on this play. So see, we got this nice fluid simulation. So now let us give the material for this fluid. So just I will open a material view. So just drag this. And here I will go to shader editor. And now by selecting this cube domain and just we'll create a new material. So click on this new and now it has been created the new material. And just I will select this and I will delete this. And here we have to take an principal volume. So search for like principal volume. And just I will connect this volume to this volume here. And also I will uh, select the render engine to cycle. So first I will go to this render and here instead of EV, I will select cycles and also just I will select the option to GPU. And now suppose if you go to this like render view and now we got this default material. So now we will give one light here. So like just I will go to the side view and here I will create a light by pressing shift A, go to the light option and here I will create the area light. So just this is the area light and I will move towards this direction and just I will rotate towards this direction here. And now we need to change the light settings. So by selecting this light, we will go to this option like data. Mm -hmm. And here we can change the color. It depends on your requirement. We can give the color. So in this cases, I am going to give uh, to this like yellowish color. And here I will give the power to like 28,000. So see now the light colors has been applied to this smoke. And here shape, I will select it to like rectangle. And I will give the value to like 6 five meters and I don't want any color in the background. So just I will go to the world settings and here the strength I will give to like zero. So now if you see, so we got this nice lighting and now we will continue with the material for this cube. So I will select this cube. So, so this is a domain here. And first I will take an color ramp node so that we will have an control over this color of this smoke here. So just I will take an color ramp. 
and I will connect this color to this color here. And see, by using this position, we can able to control this color ramp. See, now we can able to decrease and increase the brightness of this smoke here. And next, we will take a volume info node. So select this, take a volume info node. And just I will connect this density to this fact. So literally, we need to take a math node and we need to connect it to density. So select this, we need to take a math node. And just I will connect it to density here and we'll take an another math node. So by pressing shift D, we can just like duplicate. And here what I will do is just I will connect this value to this value here. And here I will select it to like multiply and we'll take one more math. So by pressing shift T, select this and connect this value. And now here what I will do is just I will select the second value to this density and the first value to flame. And now we will give the values for this multiply. Let's say here I will give the value to like 50. So see, now we are getting this effect. And here I will give the value to like 5. And next we need to control the emission. So we need to create an emission from this object here. So for that I will take an another math node. And this time I will connect it to emission strength. So again I will shift T. So connect this value to here. And now we need to connect this value to flame. So select this and just we need to connect it to flame. And literally we'll give the value. For this we need to give 100. And literally I will give this to like 1. And now we need to create another color ramp. And this color ramp we need to connect it to like emission color. So select this and give this emission color. And later we need to take an another math node. So select this. And now we need to connect this value to flame. So select this and we need to connect it to flame. So now what the thing is, this color ramp is belongs to the flame. So now the flame has been spread towards the end of this smoke. So just we will change the position of this thing here. So now you can see, now this emission is applying only up to this flame area here. And it depends on your requirement, you can adjust this value. And now here we can give the color of this flame. So select this. So here let's I will select it to like a little bit of reddish. So see now we got this nice effect. And if you want, you can give variations in this color. Uh, so if you want to add, you can add the point and you can select this and you can give a little bit of yellowish color. It depends on your requirement. And once we'll see how it will come. So just I will render this thing. So now we are getting this nice effect. So we need to change the angle of this camera here. So just I will change the camera angle. So I will go to the camera view and just by pressing N, we can lock the camera. So select this and select this camera and I will press N again and I will set this angle here. And now we will render this. So see, we got this nice smoke and fire effect. Let's say if you want to change the color of this smoke, we have to change the color of the light. Uh, so for example, like if I select this light and I will unlock this camera and now we will select this light. And here, if you go to the light settings here, I will change the color to little bit of light yellow. And now we will render this. So just we'll go to this render, render image. So you can see now according to the light emission, so we can change the color of this smoke here. So in this way, we can create this fireball effect. And if you want to create a render sequence, we can go to the render and render animation. Before that, we need to make some settings here. So if you go to this render, sorry, output, and here we can give the number of frame up to where you want to render. Let's say if I want to render up to like 150 frames, you can render up to 150 frames. And here you can select the frame rate. Let's say if I, if I select this 60, now it will render with the 60 frames per second. And here you can select the file format. We can select it like JPG or any other formats here. And we need to check all the settings and we need to give the location where you want to save it. So let's say if I select this and you have to select the location. And after that, just we need to select this and click on this render animation. So you need to play with these values in the material tab until you get the desired output. So in this way, we can create this fireball animation. So that's it for this tutorial. See you in the next video.